Good evening and welcome to the Larchmont Village Center and to this uh, wonderful event this evening where we're going to be hearing about the Historic Preservation Task Force Forces, sorry, Historic Resource Survey. Um, just to give, I'm Mayor Walsh, um, for those of you who don't know me, and um, I have here with us um, Trustee Malcolm Froman, Trustee Bubba Pinelli, Trustee Sarah Bauer, Trustee Carol Herman, timely entrance right there. And we also have with us um, State Assemblyman Steve Otis. Thank you very much for joining us, one and all. Um, just to give a little background before we move into the program, um, in 2016, um, a house here in Larchmont Village was threatened with demolition. And that really brought to uh, mind, once again, because I think it had been an issue, um, you know, several times repeating over the years, um, that we had no way to preserve some of the really important historic buildings in this village. And we do have many. Um, we just sort of know them, but part of the, 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 the reason for this project is to really, really get to know um, where they are and, and um, what they are. Um, in response to that um, circumstance, the village board declared a moratorium and then went and worked with um, community groups and created 17 new zoning laws for the residential neighborhoods of the village. When we finished with that, we decided it was time to move on to talking about historic preservation legislation in the village. And we looked at several other communities, um, all of which had some variation of legislation, but had had not, not very good luck with um, really enforcing that legislation. And so it was decided that we would create a historic preservation task force to really delve into how to do it, how to do it well. Um, I'm so happy that in 2017, after we created the structure of the historic preservation task force, um, that Maury Tamarin um, willingly um, uh, accepted the position of chair to run the historic preservation task force. This was a really very difficult um, endeavor, I think. She took on... Um, knowingly took on what was going to be several year commitment. Um, and I know that my first meeting with Maury, she came in with a sheet, a step-by-step -step process all laid out on how to do education and outreach and data collection because she felt that, and, and I agreed, that it was really important that we go about engaging and informing the community so that we would all be together as we move towards the idea of historic preservation legislation. Over the last couple of months, um, the group has decided that the next step that made sense was to get a historic resource survey done. And they applied to the New York Preservation League for a grant, which they won. And that is going to partially fund this, um, this project. Um, I want to thank Maury Tamarin and the entire Historic Preservation Task Force, most of whom are here this evening, and that would be Malcolm Froman is our trustee member. Uh, we have Elliot Sklar and Michael Donnelly, and we have Denise Fletcher and Rick Lefevre. I don't think Rick is here this evening. Okay. So I thank them very, very much for their commitment to this issue and to the work of this uh, task force. I also want to thank the New York State Preservation League for giving us this grant. And now I'm going to turn the microphone over to Maury Tamron, who is going to um, lay out a little bit more of the work of the Historic Preservation Task Force, and then we'll introduce um, Neil Larson, who is going to be doing the survey. Hello everyone, neighbors, friends, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I know it's not a very pleasant evening, but I think we're here for a very good reason, an exciting moment in the history of our village and in planning for the future of our village. Before I get started about talking uh, a little bit more about what the task force has been doing, I, I really want to thank the mayor and all of the uh, board of trustee members here in in the village for initiating our work and supporting our work. Uh, we felt 
very much um, in keeping with the uh, ideas of the village uh, management and, and it has meant so much to us as we, as we moved ahead in the last few years. So as the mayor mentioned, uh, a little over two years ago, the task force convened and primarily what we did for the first several months is to really reach out to other communities in Westchester in particular, but also in the rest of the state and beyond to find out what their communities have done in terms of planning for their future through historic preservation. We spoke with many wonderful people. We've spoken to people at the State Historic uh, Preservation Office and Preservation League of New York. And we've had great partnership with our own Larchmont Historical Society. Susan Emery is here tonight. And uh, what we have done is to consolidate our findings and we published uh, two annual reports, which are all uh, posted on the village, uh, the, the village website. So there's a lot of information in there about what we've done, what we've found, issues about property valuation and the other uh, people we've spoken to around uh, the, the county. And as we've said before, we found out that nearly half of in legislation, and so the question is not why should we, but why hasn't Larchmont already moved ahead with, with uh, with some sort of legislation, and that's what we're doing now. Mainly what we found out is that one of the important first steps is to really research, document, inventory what we have here so we know how to go forward with, with data that is organized by professional and very uh, well schooled um, professionals in, in, this, in this way. So as the mayor mentioned, we applied to the uh, New, York, uh, New York State Council of the Arts and the Preservation League of New York. I want to thank Francis Ziegler at the Preservation League, who was very helpful in guiding us through this application process. And I'm happy to say that uh, their review of our application and their granting of the application was an enthusiastic um, uh, unanimous vote in our favor and so we are at this moment now where we are launching the actual historic resources survey and the firm that is going to be conducting the survey in the next year is uh, Neil Larson's firm, Larson Fisher Associates, they're located up in Woodstock, New York and they have produced dozens of these surveys for New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and beyond, and we're very... Okay, thanks for uh, coming out on a rainy night. Um, impressive turnout, um, based on my experience, so it's good to see um, so many people interested in this uh, historic preservation project. Um, it's not so What I'll do tonight is, is kind of quickly uh, walk you through what that process is and then um, I'll be happy to handle whatever questions you have. Um, as the, not to repeat too much, but as the, the mayor said and, and the a historic resource survey serves a number of purposes. Um, one, one is that it's really a local history uh, project that uh, collects and organizes information about uh, the, the village's history um, in, in ways that haven't been done before, um, finding new information to record, and of course most of this um, information will be based on uh, the built environment, um, which, which is something that uh, in the past has been kind of generally overlooked as a source of, of history. Um, it'll also be a, a valuable education tool for homeowners, um, for uh, students in the schools, for planners um, to better understand um, what we're living in uh, and, uh, and how to uh, preserve our, uh, the, the things that we value. The third thing it does is provide tools um, or leads to uh, Historic preservation planning, which has been one of the things that has uh, uh, come here first in, in Larchmont, 
in terms of some of the, uh, the, the preservation issues that have, have arisen and have led to the creation of the task force. What does reconnaissance level mean? A historic resource survey begins with a, a broad but comprehensive study or reconnaissance of what exists in a community both architecturally and historically. From this overview, we get a better picture of what's there and a better idea of, of, of what it means historically. Um, these reconnaissance projects lead to more intensive uh, levels of documentation um, that can be done for a number of purposes, uh, for purely historic reasons um, or for uh, developing proposals for uh, historic districts um, or other kinds of designations. It identifies what's rare and what contributes to the identity and the character of a community. Um, but most importantly, it's going to identify what's been overlooked, unappreciated, and what has emerged as significant in recent years, and that can be quite a lot. Um, our experience in working with Westchester towns um, is that there's a whole category of, of history and, and development and architecture um, from the 20th century that really has yet to uh, come forward and, and be assess for its significance to the community. Um, <clears throat> I apologize for the fuzzy uh, images, um, but they're essentially just uh, there to look at. <laughs> so in what way I'm getting ahead of my, my notes here. Anyway, in what way is, is a comprehensive the survey? The survey will look at the entire village and properties of all kinds to complete a record of the development history of Larchmont. Um, it won't be a selected one for a particular period or a class of architecture. Um, it will look at, at everything and uh, organize the information about um, each of these types and periods and areas that comprise the, the village. Why do this? Well, the most important reason to do this is to create a record, and actually to begin to create a record for historic properties and neighborhoods in the village where, where none has existed. Um, and promote a better understanding of the features that characterize our community. Um, there's a lot to appreciate about uh, the architecture. I think we all appreciate it on a, on, on a certain kind of casual level. Um, I, I know as someone who has taught um, architectural history um, in, in towns like this that uh, uh, the, the more we know about the uh, the background of these buildings and, and their architectural development, uh, the more we see and the more we appreciate in them. Uh, let me go back to this early map, 1892, um, which basically shows the village um, after the creation of uh, Manor Park. Um, and, and you notice that uh, on the other side of the post road, um, very little development has, has taken place by this time. Um, as, as I'm sure you all know, Manor Park is uh, quite a significant uh, example of, of suburban, early suburban subdivision, um, dating back to the 1860s when uh, uh, such subdivisions were, were really only beginning to, to take place. Um, and then 30 some years later, um, this is a map showing the other side of uh, the post road. Um, 
you know, 30 some years later, the village was practically built out. And it's, it's uh, this remarkable development history comprised of uh, uh, numerous subdivisions creating numerous neighborhoods that uh, really exist today um, that, that represent a large part of, of the village and its history. Here's a current map of the properties in the village today, and this will serve as our base map for moving forward with uh, planning our survey. Based on Larchmont assessor records, there are approximately 1,450 residential properties with resources dated prior to 1970. We choose 1970 um, as the <clears throat> traditional 50-year cutoff for assessing significance for the National Register. Um, the rationale being that uh, there hasn't been enough time in the past 50 years to uh, really assess the significance of a particular type or period or design. <clears throat> On the other hand, we know that in recent years, things change a lot faster than that. Um, so uh, you know, we'll, be, we'll be looking for uh, significant properties uh, really from all periods. So you, you see that uh, there are 130 properties that were dated pre-1900. Um, of course, assessor records are generally fuzzy. These are one thing that we will uh, try to refine as, as we go through the process. Um, between 1900 and 1929, uh, 875 uh, buildings were added to the, the village. Um, quite a significant period. 1930 to 59, which includes the Depression and post-World War II years, um, 345 buildings uh, were listed. And, uh, between 1960 and 1970, um, <clears throat> not, this is, I put 100, it's not really a clear count, there are probably more um, of, of, of infill and uh, uh, replacement buildings, a lot of commercial buildings. Uh, many of these properties, are contained in one of at least 15 residential subdivisions platted before 1930. Another 50 or so non-residential properties are estimated to exist that include churches, schools, public buildings, and commercial properties. For each of these, we'll be recording data about the type, period, method of construction, materials, design elements, and alterations as well as outbuildings and distinctive landscape features. Until fairly recently, this information was recorded on paper forms, such as the one pictured here, um, and filed away somewhere um, in the towns and uh, in the state. With the advent of computer databases, <coughs> the task has shifted into the digital realm. About five years ago, New York State launched a statewide cultural resource information system, CRIS for short, to standardize and centralize historic property data for the state's use, as well as for local applications. Uh, bugs are still being worked out. CRIS 2.0 is about to go online this month, uh, and we intend to use it to record property data here in Larchmont. We're all going up for a, a training session in a couple of weeks, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll be a smooth transition. We'll be using an application that allows us to enter information about buildings about a property directly from the field, as, as well as photographs and GPS locations 
on an iPad or a cell phone, uploading it to the Chris server in Albany. For a reconnaissance level survey, we're concerned only with the exterior features, so we can do all of this from the public right of way and not uh, trespass. This is a table from the, the Greenberg survey. This was done 16 years ago um, in, in a database uh, method that, that my firm developed in the absence of there being one um, operative at the state. Um, but when the survey is completed, um, a spreadsheet like this can be downloaded and used by the village for its, its uses. Um, this has about 30 uh, categories of information um, about particular buildings, their, their scale, their design, their uh, materials, uh, windows, uh, alterations, and as I said, landscape features, and so on. Also, from this spreadsheet and, uh, and from Chris, maps can be created to, um, to show the location of, of the buildings that are in the survey. Um, some towns have taken our spreadsheet data and linked them to interactive maps so that uh, property owners and others can just click on their location and, and get access to the information that's been reported about them. And then both in the case of the spreadsheet and the map, um, information can be updated um, as, as new information comes in or information that we didn't collect in this process um, can, can become interactive that way as well. A big part of the survey is the survey report. And here's a picture of the table of contents of the, of the report we did for, for Greenberg. Um, some of the report will be based on the, the field data, but it will also be providing background context information about uh, the architecture in the town so that uh, uh, the, the the peculiarities of, of things here in Larchmont can be um, assessed for their uh, relationship to broader context of architecture um, and as well as in, in the village itself. The report also will include assessments of significance and recommendations for future actions. Um, the state requires it and uh, it's useful for the, the village uh, to know, to have a kind of list of uh, properties and districts that appear to meet the National Register criteria um, based on the limited uh, information we've developed here. Um, and, it, and it's from that that uh, you know, preservation decisions can be made. So the report will contain a chronology that we will <clears throat> distill from, we'll, we'll be going through um, all of the local source material, mostly secondary sources um, about the history of, of the village. Um, and from that we'll distill a, a chronology of uh, important dates and, and events that uh, really relate to our uh, assessment of, of historical significance here. Um, survey reports require a history section, but we don't intend to rewrite the village's history in this report. Um, but we will provide a, uh, an outline of it. <coughs> it will also contain, and, and probably most importantly, an architectural overview. Um, based on what we learn here, 
um, in, in, in our survey and uh, place these uh, various building types and uh, architecture into um, a historical architectural context. In Greenberg, we were lucky to find loads of information on the development of its 20th century subdivision in the New York Times. Um, you know, every time a developer was selling lots or uh, you know, promoting a, a type of building that they were building there, um, they would often advertise um, in the Times. Um, today I learned that uh, the Larchmont Times is now digitized and uh, from 1912 to the 1950s which is the perfect period for us to look about at you know, the history of real estate development. Because I imagine that, uh, as in other places, anytime somebody built a house, there was a news item about it. Um, <clears throat> as I was going through, uh, the, I learned at the library that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the newspaper, the digital, the digital version of the newspaper, um, has been loaded, uploaded into a, a site, a newspaper site called Fulton History. And uh, so I was scanning through that site this afternoon, looking at, uh, you know, putting in some uh, keywords for Larchmont, and uh, found that not only does Larchmont Times have uh, news about um, architecture in Larchmont, but um, the Mount Vernon newspaper did, the Austin, um, really, Countywide newspapers have that information, so I believe we'll find a lot of uh, really good new information about um, who's building these buildings, the architects, the builders, um, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so our plan of action is to begin our field work as soon as the leaves leave the trees. Um, up in my neck of the woods there, practically gone. Um, here we have to wait a little longer. Um, and that's to aid our photography. Um, we really need to see as much as we can of the building to, uh, to record it. Um, we'll have a team of two field workers, both skilled in the technology. Um, and as uh, Maury said, we've uh, been talking with our high school friends about uh, uh, working some on, on this to, to gain a little hands-on experience with the process. <clears throat> I'll focus on the background and overview materials um, and write the report, uh, keep the task force apprised of our, uh, uh, our progress. And uh, we expect by year's end to have a uh, a good study for you all to uh, to read and review and, uh, um, and and use towards your future plans. So with that, I thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, you have things that may concern you or you may wonder about. Well, it's my understanding that along with uh, assessing uh, the architectural and visual. <coughs> Everybody hear that question? Yeah. <clears throat> um, how do we account for history at, at this level of survey? Well, about the only way for us is, is to rely on the source material that exists to provide us with those, those clues. Um, but in practice, a reconnaissance survey is a kind of superficial one. And uh, those kinds of historical associations that uh, lend significance to a property, um, you know, may have to come at a, at another stage. But I mean, all the ones you're thinking of are are in current source material, so we should we should be aware of that. Um, and actually, I don't ex 
I, I expect that we're going to identify a lot of areas, neighborhoods that appear to have significance um, and fewer individual properties just because there's there's so many good neighborhoods here in Larchmont. Yes? Can you clarify what the criteria are? <clears throat> well, the criteria we follow is the National Register criteria. Right. And it, um, it identifies our significance in four principal areas. One is it's associated with a historical event of some significance, or it's associated with an individual of some significance. It has architectural qualities of some significance, and, and the fourth one um, is reserved for archaeology, which we're not going to um, deal with in, in this survey. Um, but uh, the other thing I should mention is that the National Register has levels of significance, too. There's national, state, and local levels of significance. And, and one thing that's important for us to do um, in these local surveys is, is to appreciate things that are significant locally. They may not be conceived as significant by the state because that's a state level of significance. So <clears throat> we're very careful to keep our focus on, on, on the locality. Anybody else? Yeah. Can you uh, research property records to see where all the money is for this property? Um, Excuse me, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, it was asked do we use um, property records, deed records, to, uh, to research the properties. Um, only, in, in this case, only very selectively. Excuse me. If we were documenting an individual building intensively or preparing a National Register nomination, it's a matter of course now to, uh, to, to do a deed history and uh, you know, get, get clear information about uh, uh, its origins, basically. Um, in this survey, we'll do some of that um, primarily to find out um, history about the development of a, of a subdivision. You know, they, they may trace one or two properties back to see if we can find a subdivision map or information about the subdivision through the deeds. Um, but we're not going to be able to spend um, time with 1,400 buildings doing things like this. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Just about. Um, <clears throat> definitely, um, yeah, just about, and, and, but we'll do it, you see that table there, we're going to, we're going to do it in a kind of schematic way so that we can get to some of the, um, you know, defining architectural information that allows us to classify those buildings and um, then assess them for um, their significance or their contribution to a, historic area. Uh, yeah, I mean, with that large a number, I mean, that's, this is kind of a winnowing process that, that we're going through here too, but comprehensiveness is important. We want to make sure that we look at everything before we narrow it down. In the past, surveys were, you know, the conventional windshield survey was, was just some architectural historian driving around saying, I like that one, I'll do that one, I'll do that one. Um, a lot of stuff gets passed over in, in that process. Isn't it true that while um, on a particular street or one property, a building that on its own is significant, but as mm. a collection, there's a significance to the picture? Is that something Absolutely. That Did everybody hear that question? Mm -hmm. Not quite. <clears throat> Um, well, what the mayor is referring to is that um, in terms of assessing significance, a building can be contributing in a historic neighborhood, contributing to the significance of a historic neighborhood or district without being individually eligible in and of itself. Um, and yeah, that, 
that's going to happen a lot. Anybody else? Well, it will provide um, kind of a template for that. Um, uh, how it proceeds from there is, you know, then up to the uh, the village to determine um, or prioritize. Um, I mean, if there's a, a bunch of areas that appear to have significance, then there will need to be some kind of prioritized approach, and maybe we'll be able to suggest something. Um, but uh, yeah, it can potentially lead to um, national or local designations. But before that happens, much more detailed documentation of those areas or those buildings would need to be done. I see a hand back there. Does the survey include uh, both residential and uh, commercial districts? Yeah, everything. Anybody else? How about trees? No. There are uh, there are tree surveys, right? You must have a tree survey here. Yeah. Well, no. Um, I say that, but um, I said earlier that we will be recording um, landscape features in this, and if there is a significant tree, it will probably be noted. Somewhere. Yeah. Will the city wall structure build after 1970? <clears throat> yeah, we'll look at them, but um, you know, unless unless they're uniquely distinctive, um, they'll they'll be put off until they get old enough. <laughs> The question was, what about houses that have been significantly renovated? Um, we'll probably still record them, particularly if they're in a, you know, a collection of, of, of historic, good historic buildings. Um, and but it will, the, the the database will say that they're altered and. Um, how am I going to know they're altered? Should be able to see it, right? Oh, on the inside? Well, we don't. We're not worried about what's altered on the inside. But if the exterior is, is altered, if it's been enlarged, or if it's the materials have been changed, or you know, windows have been changed, porches removed, that sort of thing, which we run into a lot, maybe not so much here, um, then that's noted in the, in the database, and they wouldn't be if they were singly there, we, they wouldn't be evaluated as significant. But if they're part of a, as, as the mayor suggested, if they're part of an area that appears to have significance, we'll note that. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I don't know why years ago, I heard a presentation about the, 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 the displacement of the national requirements from 1994. But the one with respect to architecture was limited to a particularly distinctive example of a certain type or a significant work of a significant architect. Mm -hmm. Is that the standard that you're doing? Um, yes, it needs to be a distinctive example of a type, period, method of construction, or the work of a master. That's why we thought architects were masters. <laughs> Um, but that is also something that's applied on the local level. Um, you know, we're not looking only at properties designed by nationally significant architects. Um, I found a lot of architects named as I was going through these newspapers this afternoon, a lot of local architects. I think it, I don't know, you may know a lot of them, but I think it'd be cool to attach some architects and builders to a lot of our buildings. 
Are you raising your hand back there? I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I'm on the planning board, and I was wondering how these reports have been used to do as part of the state environmental quality review that's reported, uh, required in certain instances. It, you know, like local historic significance is one of the elements of, of the SECA review. And you now have a survey that says something is or is not potentially mm -hmm. historic. I mean, how have they been used in that context? Well, I mean, actually, Seeker is just, uh, everybody know about the State Environmental Quality Review Act? Um, and that's a tool for localities to assess and, and address potential environmental impacts. If a property is listed on a national register, it's... I'm, it, I'm assuming it's not in this... Well, but it, it's only a type one action if it is listed on the national register. So anything that isn't listed doesn't automatically become a type one action. Um, this survey um, isn't gonna really change that. This survey will provide um, a better understanding and, and a kind of list of, of properties we think have potential significance. And then that should, you know, for the planning board, um, be a tool for, you know, looking out for, for properties. But, uh, um, you know, it's a long way from there to the National Register. Um, but we find in other communities that they have taken um, our list of uh, selected properties, shall I say, um, and use them as... Uh, as, as, as a guideline for you know, when projects come up or proposals come up related to them, um, to then be conscious of historic preservation issues. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Have you found that the, after presenting a list like that, that communities come back to you and say, um, we know that these buildings won't be on the National Registry, yeah. but um, we are creating our own uh, requirements right. so that no buildings mm -hmm. that are labeled this or that or whatever can be taken down. Have you found that to be the case? Um, yes. Um, the way the National Register, you know, the National Register is essentially a list that uh, identifies properties to protect in state and federal planning. Um, <clears throat> but in, in that case, um, any property that's affected by a, a project is, is a, if it's not listed on the National Register, is evaluated and determined if it's eligible for the National Register. And if it's eligible, then the same protections apply. Um, this list I'm talking about that um, will be created at the end of this survey um, can serve as a kind of eligible list for the, the village um, and for planning to uh, you know, keep an eye out for things. There was another hand up over there. Changed your mind? Uh, no. I'm interested in your experience taking now a zero point. Uh, when can the planning board expect to have some useful instruction on this? A year, two years, three years? I see a very deliberative process here. A very well, lengthy I mean, process. Well, we'll have a report to you um, within a year. Um, and then I would imagine some discussion could then take place. Uh, regarding how to apply it. Well, I suppose I join with some large markers who are worried about the next year or year and a half when the planning board has no guidelines. But that's not your problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Well, thank you. Thank you everybody for coming tonight.
I just want to make a few comments about um, the the aftermath, as it were, of this uh, process and once we have the product, once we have this report. So as we've been talking about, uh, many of our neighboring municipalities have gone ahead and passed historic preservation legislation. And that's where we will be heading, hopefully, once uh, in, in the meantime, but certainly once this report is, um, is produced, to use what is a model uh, uh, historic preservation law and to be able to take the information that we've gotten from this report and to tweak it for historic preservation ordinance that would work <coughs> for Larchmont. And one of the things that this would do would, uh, would be to very uh, specifically identify the kinds of um, properties that might be worthy of designation and, and the criteria for that. And in that uh, ordinance is often a, uh, something about uh, demolition and demolition of what would be designated property. So the thing is, is that this is a long process and I understand that some people are very anxious that it happened right away, uh, but we are taking a very meth um, methodical approach and the, this approach while it may seem slow to some people, according to the people we know at the state level, we're, we're actually moving along at a clip, even though it, it may not sound like it. So I hope you can um, be involved in the process. We will be posting uh, on the Village website occasional updates about how uh, Neil's process is coming along and some of the other um, events that we will be having. So we would love you to be involved, but to, to know that the process that we're doing, the, the pace at which we're going, has been uh, deemed by SHPO, the Preservation League of New York, and other uh, entities that we have spoken to as, as the right way to proceed. So uh, we're very happy that you came tonight. Please do look at the Village website for some of the documentation that we have posted over the last couple of years. There's more information in there. And uh, thank you again so much for coming and your participation. And you'll be hearing more from us as the process goes on. And thank you very much to me.